where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you. I think I had shared in my original bulletin article that I like soccer. In fact, I've, I played and coached soccer for many years. And one of the things you learned as both a player and a coach, and it's not just with soccer, but other sports, that there's always in that sport an ultimate goal. You know, it might be, you know, in the league to kind of have the league championship. Um, you know, in soccer, if you're a professional, it's winning the World Cup. Football, maybe if you're a professional player, winning the Super Bowl. If you're a high school athlete, could be winning a state title. There's always that ultimate goal. And with that goal in mind, of course, there's lots of practice that goes in. Practice to get ready, you know, and that's kind of drudgery sometimes. It's not as much fun as playing in a game. Uh, but you also have games that prepare for that. And every once in a while, there's a game that is kind of a foretaste of that championship game. Maybe it's playing the best team in the league, or maybe it's simply, you know, against that rival. You know, if you beat that rival team, then it doesn't matter anything else. That's part of the goal. Uh, and so I thought of those kind of sports images today with our scriptures, because the scriptures today talk about an ultimate goal, even a championship, if you will, only doesn't use sports images. Uh, we hear the image of a feast. Now to put that in perspective, think about the people in the ancient world, uh, certainly before the time of Jesus or even in the time of Jesus, you know, food was often scarce uh, and regular daily food was pretty basic. Uh, they didn't have a Kroger to go to and take things off the shelf. Uh, and Special, it was only for special occasions that they would have a big meal. And they would, we hear in the, even the parable of the prodigal son, slaughter the fatted calf. So a feast meant really something incredible, a great celebration. Uh, and that's what we hear of at the beginning, in the first reading today, from the prophet Isaiah. It says, on this mountain the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples. That is, God will provide and he said, for all peoples. And he says, a feast of rich food and choice wines, uh, rich food and choice wines. And on this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples. The web that is woven over all nations, he will destroy death forever. That's, so this feast, even as Isaiah says, this feast is really in heaven. This feast is where God destroys death forever. He said, God, on this mountain, the mountain of God, where God lives. So we think about that, God in heaven, and that there is this great heavenly banquet, heavenly feast that we are invited to, that God provides. Uh, think about that, that is, of course, our ultimate goal. That's winning the Super Bowl for us you know, getting to heaven. Uh, and it's God that provides. And Isaiah goes on to say, you know, and tears are wiped away. That sense that this is a feast where sorrow is dispelled. You know, all of that trying to create an image and a desire to spur us on to that goal, that goal of heaven. And then Jesus, of course, is again, is talking to the chief priests and the elders and he tells them another parable because they're not really listening to him. And he sells, tells this parable about the king and his son, and his son who is going to have a wedding. And the king wants to throw a big feast. Now imagine if you're just, you know, normal folks like you and me, you know, and you're invited to a wedding, uh, not just any wedding, this is the king. It's kind of like being invited to a wedding at the White House or something. So we'd expect it to be really incredible. And yet what happens? People say, no, uh, I'm too busy. I don't want to go. Uh, I'm too busy for that. 
And the king sends out another invitation with his servants. And even those servants are either ignored or some are mistreated and killed. And then he says to his servants, go out and invite everybody you can find. And they invite them into the feast. It says the good and the bad alike, all welcome to this feast. And of course, this too, Jesus is speaking about this heavenly feast. Uh, the feast really, and he of course, is the son, the son who uh, wa the son who the father is wants to celebrate. Um, we talk about Christ and the church is his bride. The bride is, of Christ is the church, in a sense that we're all invited to that feast, and we are again have to make that decision like all those invited, and uh, because this is the heavenly banquet. But it's also more than that heavenly banquet because Jesus also gives us a foretaste, a foretaste of heaven. Uh, and that's what we celebrate at each Eucharist. We have a foretaste of that heavenly feast. It's kind of like, if you use a sports image again, it's kind of like that, that one game that's a foretaste of the championship. You know, that you're playing the best team, or it's your rival. Uh, even the Catechism says, Mass anticipates the wedding feast of the Lamb in the heavenly Jerusalem. That's the Mass, anticipates the wedding feast of the, of the Lamb in the heavenly Jerusalem. And so we remember, we hear these scriptures today, it's not, it's about heaven, our ultimate goal, but also being motivated and preparing to get there and to respond. Uh, that taste of heaven and this, this taste of heaven we have in the Eucharist which can inspire us and lead us and help us get ready for that championship game because it help, reminds us why we're here and what is our ultimate goal. Now Jesus also puts in there this little thing about the person without the wedding garment. Uh, it's like, why, you know, so all these people are invited to the, the, to the wedding feast, the good and the bad alike, they bring them all in, and someone hasn't got a wedding garment. Uh, what does that really mean? Well, I thought about it again like soccer, so when I was refereeing, you know, if you showed up at the game, you know, you don't have to have a fancy uniform, but it better be the right color, and you have to have a number. <laughs> uh, otherwise, how does a referee know which side you're on? And so for this wedding feast, uh, we have to have, we have to be prepared. Uh, St. Augustine, in writing about this scripture topic, uh, this scripture passage, he suggested that really the wedding garment is charity. That the garment we put on for that heavenly feast, the garment that we prepare is acts of charity, having a heart of charity showing charity to others. He says that's really the wedding garment that we have to have. Um, and of course, part of that garment, you know, um, even when we come to the Eucharist, we want to be prepared to receive worthily. So we say, you know, if you have mortal sin to go to confession. Uh, so you might have the garment on, but you might need it clean first. <laughs> but that's part of recognizing how important this is, that we need to really open our hearts and minds to the gift of Christ, uh, this foretaste of heaven. In many ways, we're not any closer to those saints and angels in heaven than when we're at the altar, when we come to Mass, because they join us as well. So this Mass is that taste of, of the wedding feast, and we come to receive Christ, both in the word of Christ and in the sacrament, that we can be fed, that we can be prepared for that ultimate goal, for heaven. So this week, I'd encourage all of us, for maybe a little bit of homework, is to think, how can I respond better to the invitation? The invitation to the wedding feast, the ultimate feast in heaven, but also the feast of the Eucharist. How can I, how can I respond better? Uh, and even if I'm not able to come to Mass at 
the, at right now. I know some people may be watching live stream at home. How could I prepare better? And you know, if, I, if you can't come to Mass or you know someone who can't come, let us know. We can bring communion. Uh, priests make house calls. I don't know if you knew that, but we do that. Uh, we can bring that communion. And for our part, each of us to really make sure we are working on that wedding garment, particularly acts of charity, as St. Augustine would encourage, that as we are, have charity in our hearts for our brothers and sisters, as we act in love and charity, we are prepared for that heavenly wedding feast. And that we're not only invited to the banquet, but we respond and we're prepared and we're there to celebrate really what we celebrate in this Eucharist, the gift of Christ, that closeness and that union with him that he gives us his body and blood so that we too can look ahead to spending eternity with him on that mountain, as Isaiah said, where tears are wiped away, on that holy mountain where death is put aside and that we can keep our eyes fixed on the ultimate goal, uh, championship, if you will, that goal of eternal life with God in heaven.